Okay, this morning uh, what I'm going to uh, be talking about is largely using uh, files for text processing. And we're going to work on a copy of Jane Austen's novel Pride and Prejudice. And you've got that file as a text file in Moodle. And move it to your working directory. And then read a write a program to read the contents of the file line by line into a list called lines. Iterate over the file handle to do this. And this is using the methods in uh, the reading I gave you by Charles Severance. And in the reading loop, count the number of lines you read. Compare this with the length of the list you get in the len function. And don't forget to close the file. OK, so I want you right now to uh, pause the video and go do that. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about it, OK? OK, you're back. So let's look at the way we did that. So we're accumulating two things. We're accumulating a count of lines, and we're accumulating a list of lines. And this is the uh, rigmarole we go through. We create a file handle by opening the name of the file with the R option for read. And then for line in file handle, you append the line to lines, and you add one to the count. And then you print the length of the lines and print the count. And then you close the file. And you notice that you got the same thing by uh, counting the number of trips you made through the loop as you do for the length of the line. So we got one line for every trip through the loop. OK. So what is the type of the objects in the list lines? OK, well, this is really pretty easy to do. So it's just, just you just uh, simply take a look at the type of the first item in lines, or really any item in lines. And it says it is a string. OK. So open the file for reading again, and read it using read lines to create lines 2, and then test to see if lines 1, lines and lines 2 are identical. And don't forget to close the file. OK. So I want you to uh, pause the video and carry this out, and then come back and uh, start the video again, and we'll look at it. OK, you're back. Let's take a look. This code is somewhat simpler. Uh, you just create the file handle as you did before. Then lines 2 is file handle.readlines. And print lines, whether li lines 2 is equal to lines. And you get true, and then you close the file. OK? So yeah, this works. And it's, it's so much simpler, you might ask, uh, why would you ever want to use the iteration method? So just think for a second about that. Why would you want to use iteration if it's more complicated than just simply dot read lines? And the answer is that you might want to be selective about which lines to keep. So here we're, for example, here we're using the iteration method to build lines 3. It contains only lines with a length greater than 1. And I'm going to use the iteration method to build lines 3 because you realize that what I've done is <coughs> I've modified the procedure <coughs> for reading the, for, that I originally used to read lines by being selective. So for line in NH, but then if the length of the line is greater than 1 then lines 3 dot append line. And we only come up with 10,721 lines. OK, so being selective is something that you're able to do with iteration, which you can't do with simply read lines. <clears throat> Although you could certainly take the object that you created by read lines and uh, trim it down. So what is the average length of a line in lines? So pause the video and figure out what the, the average length of a line is. And after you get done, restart the video, and I'll talk about it. OK, 
And again, this is a simple matter of our uh, accumulation method. We begin by setting total equal to zero, and then as you read a line, you add the length of the current line to total. And then when you get when you get done, you compute the average length by taking the total by the number of lines that you had, and you get a an average length of 52.53. Okay. Lines three. What is lines three? Hmm. Well, lines 3 is what we just created. And it has a length of 63.6, an average length of 63. So it is somewhat longer if you restrict the lines to have a length greater than or equal to 1. Or greater than 1. How many lines in lines <clears throat> have a length of zero? Okay, well, go ahead and figure that out. It's a fairly simple thing, but we'll, I want you to pause the video and do it and then come back. Okay, you're back, so let's take a look. So we're counting the lines which have a length of zero, and there are none of them. There is no such thing as a line with a length of zero. But how many lines have length one? Well, let's take a look. And here's the simple pattern. If the length of the line is 1, then we add 1 to the count, and we get 2,314 lines with a length of only one character. So now I want you to create a list called short lines of all the lines with length 1 using comprehension. What is in these lines? Look at the first three. Okay, pause the video and do that, then come back and start the video again, and we'll talk about uh, the solution. Okay, you're back, so let's look at the solution. Short lines is equal to line for line in lines if the length of the lines is equal to 1. And then we print them out, and for i in range of 3, print line comma 1, and then print short lines. So here's, hmm, the first one looks like there's nothing in it, and the second one looks like there's nothing in it, and the third one looks like there's nothing in it. So whatever it is, there's nothing that shows up. Hmm. So let's examine the contents of the short lines of zero using ORD. And I hope you remember to, if you, you may have to take a few minutes to look up the ORD function, remember what it was. So pause the video while you do that, then come back and take a look at it. Okay, you're back, so let's take a peek. Ah, the ORD of the one character that is in there is 10, which is basically a new line. And this is really just kind of a reminder that every line that you get back from this way of reading a file also contains a new line. So, Here's a good exercise. Consider a word to be defined as any sequence of non-blank characters separated by white space, and create a list of all the words in the file. 
use the string method split, print out the first 20 words in the list of words, and print the length of the list of words. Okay, that's going to take you a while to do. So stop the video, do the work, then come back, restart the video, and look at the solution. Okay? Okay, you're back. Let's take a look. How do we do that? So for every line that you have in the, in the list of lines, create a list of words, which is line.split. And then for word in words, words.append of word. For, or sorry, for word in L words, that is the words in this line, you append the particular word and then we print out the first 10 lines. Okay, take a look at that. Make sure you understand it. Let's go on and do something else. How many words are there? Well, that's easy. You print the length of the list of words and it's 121,567. How many unique words are there? This is really very simple, but it'll probably take you a few minutes to remember how to do it, okay? So I'm gonna, we're gonna pause the video and solve this problem and come back and look at the solution. Okay, you're back. Let's take a look. You just simply take the set of the list, and the set is always unduplicated. <clears throat> so you have 13,059 actually unique words. Of course, remember that words, in the way that we've used it, is any sequence of characters uh, separated by blank spaces, or white space, rather. So how many times is a typical unique word used? Okay, probably take you a few minutes to think about that. So let's pause the video while you think about that. Okay, you're back, so let's take a peek. So it's the length of the list of words divided by the length of the set of words. And we see that the average word is used 9.3 times. Count the number of occurrences of the word and in the list of words. <clears throat> and for what fraction of all the words is this? Okay, that's going to take you a few minutes, so please pause the video, and after you've solved the problem, start the video again and look at the solution. Okay, you're back. Let's take a peek. So again, we're accumulating a count, so we always start setting the count to zero. And for word in words, if word.lower is equal to and, and this, would in, this enables us to include any uh, variant on capitalization uh, because we convert the word that we're looking at to lowercase before we compare it with the lowercase and. Then we add count to one, and then we print the count of words is count, and the fraction of words is the count divided by the length of words. So we have 3,240 ands, which is about 2.6% 2 2 of the total count of words in the file. Okay. 
So count the number of occurrences of each word in words and test your code by finding the count of and. And remember, this is <clears throat> this is really an exercise in using uh, the using dictionaries to count things. So I'm sure this will take you a few minutes to do. So please uh, stop the video and pause. And then when you're done, come back and look. Okay, you're back, so let's take a look. So this, this is actually fairly simple. Count underscore dict is the empty dictionary. And then for word in words, count under dict of word is equal to count underscore dict dot get of word comma default zero plus one. And this is something that we went through when we had the lecture on using dictionaries for counting. And if we find the what's in the count underscore dictionary for and, you, you find 3,240 ands, which is what we had before, which is good. <coughs> so take a look at this. Again, it's, it's really not so much work on files as it is work on text processing. Find and print the 50 least common words. Okay, this is a good problem. It'll cause you to rack your brain for a few minutes and think about how can I rank the words in order to the, the frequency with which they occur. So pause the video, definitely take some time to think about it, and then when you're ready, when you've got it all done, start the video again. Okay, you're back. So here's how we we do it. We have to uh, swap the items in the count in the count dictionary. And you remember when we we did this when we were talking about uh, dictionaries. And here's the swapping trick. items equal count underscore dict dot items and then for word comma count in items item swapped dot append count comma word and then we sort the swapped items and then print out the first 50 for i in range of 50 print sorted underscore, underscore swapped swapped a by and here you get a whole bunch of uh, things these are things which occur with a count of one I think everything that you see here and my slide cuts off after uh, not too far down and you notice that <coughs> what we're getting is things like uh, quote ah uh, exclamation point and that's really not a distinct word and remember what we what we've done we took a very simple approach we said a word is any sequence of non-blank characters separated by white space okay now that <clears throat> Text files aren't the only kind of files we have. In fact, we have, it's very common to want to work with, uh, for instance, data files. And <clears throat> if you look at section 12.7 in the Zy book, and then uh, review this conversation that I have with ChatGPT, <clears throat> and you'll see the way you use CSV files. And there's also some very good uh, videos by Corey Schaefer on Pandas. And then there's a complete book on Pandas at uh, this URL. But I'm not going to actually go into that this morning. Okay. So that 
is the end of this video lecture. And there, are, there are other uses of files which I have not talked about. So primarily I spent the time talking about uh, the way we use files for text processing. And <clears throat> then I just pointed you to some material on pandas files. Okay, see you later.